Okay, we are now recording. Hi, welcome to Valley Beth Shalom. I'm Rabbi Noah Farkas. So glad to see you out there. And uh, as we are preparing for the high holidays, I have a couple of announcements to make and then I'll introduce my guest today. So uh, we are focusing our entire holiday, high holiday experience on the value of chesed, on loving kindness and what we do for each other. And so uh, every Tuesday, I'll be dropping here an interview with someone who is just wonderful, whether they do amazing work with thousands of people or just one or two people. Um, what we're talking about are people we call chesed heroes, folks who spend their time uh, sharing their love with other people, either professionally or as a volunteer. And uh, you can find information at, about all of our high holiday experiences at Valley Beth Shalom website, which is vbs.org slash high holidays. There you'll find all of your answers uh, to all of your questions, and you'll be finding all of this material, including our Chesed Heroes project. Now today, this afternoon, this evening, I'm very happy to welcome longtime Valley Beth Shalom member, amazing woman and mother, amazing leader in our community, Annette Weinberg. Annette is the director of lifestyle and enrichment of the residential unit of the Jewish home here in the San Fernando Valley. And uh, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, Annette. How are you? Thank you, Rabbi Farkas. Doing great, thanks. So, uh, you know, I've been following your posts almost every day, if not every day, every few days yeah. of the amazing work you're doing at the Jewish home. Why don't you tell me a little bit about it? So the um, interesting thing with COVID-19 is that it's given us an opportunity to to uh, get a little more creative and, and really work harder to make sure that the residents are as happy as can be, are as fulfilled as can be, because it's a stressful time. You know, we're, we're basically, we're called that we're in lockdown. That means the residents aren't getting uh, visitors, um, aren't getting family visitors. They're not able to do their regular activities. We can't have dining in the dining room. We don't have in-person activities. So the um, uh, challenge is what can I do for them to give them a fulfilling day-to-day uh, -day life? That's amazing. So tell me, how many residents, more or less, are at the Jewish home right now? Well, um, overall, between um, independent, residential, skilled nursing, we have close to 1,000 residents. I personally work with about 150. Uh, and they're on the Eisenberg campus. Uh, and uh, people might be familiar with the uh, Newman and the Weinberg buildings. And that's our residential care. Wow. And so what does it mean to be a lifestyle and enrichment director? What well, the, inter the interesting, I know it's a long title. Um, but the interesting story is that I've been at the Jewish home for six years now. And this is my third position. So I started as a um, care transition coach. Um, and that was a... Um, grant funded program when the grant uh, ended, I was moved over to the admissions department in the uh, marketing, uh, which is really what I would call my wheelhouse because my background is sales and marketing. So I thought I was in Nirvana. I'm working at the Jewish home, which is the best place to work. I'm in marketing, so I get to go out and meet with all these other people in the you know, healthcare, senior living, uh, field. And then I would give tours to the res to potential residents and their families. And I got to meet everybody and help them with their, their um, process of moving in. So for me, that was perfect. Um, but then this position came to me. And at that point, it was activities director. And I said, I'm not an activities director. I don't think that's for me. But it was a promotion. It was a bigger deal. And and I thought, I don't know, I don't think so. <laughs> I didn't really want it. But uh, our administrator, Kathleen Glass, um, she's got great vision and she believed in me. She thought I'd be terrific at it. And she says, we're enlarging this position. Um, it's gonna be more than activities. We're really looking at this now as lifestyle and enrichment. So that means not only programs and activities for the residents, but you oversee the uh, arts and crafts and the beauty shop and all the different areas that really create lifestyle. So I said, oh, all right, well, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> I'll try. And 
it wasn't maybe six weeks after my new job that COVID hit. Mm. And I, I would tell you that what I'm doing now is the most um, creative thing I've ever done. It's the most connected thing with people, with humanity, and it's the most fulfilling thing I've ever done. Wow. So just to be clear, just to make a step back for maybe folks who don't know what the Jewish home is, right? Oh, sure. sure. You like three sentences. You and I know because we're so deep in it, but can you yes. explain to the rest of the universe out there, what is the Jewish home and, and why is it so important to us as a Jewish community? And then we'll get into the, what you're doing. Oh, very good. Yeah, very good. So uh, the Jewish Home is a nonprofit organization that is a, the largest provider of health care in Los Angeles. We've been around since 1912. We're a 108 year old nonprofit organization. I would say that um, I know there are some people that aren't familiar with the Jewish Home, but most people like me have had some relative at the Jewish Home or know of someone who's had a relative at the Jewish Home. We provide housing, care, and we also provide uh, health care to people who don't live at the Jewish home. Probably another 5,000 or so that don't live at the Jewish home. We have hospice and palliative and uh, short-term rehab and uh, quite a number of services. And the majority of, of the residents are folks we would, we would call basically seniors or elders, right? Of our it's for seniors only, right? So right. it's, yeah, it's for seniors. Okay. So now, uh, so you are now in charge of creating enrichments and lifestyle for <laughs> right. this part of our community. Um, so here's of them you say are in your direct charge. So yes. what's that like? Like, how does that work? All right. So when, again, when I first started, the residents are in the, in the dining room and I had to come up with different activities to do. And, you know, these are, these are educated people with, with wonderful backgrounds and careers and, um, they came to the Jewish home to live. People think of senior living as a place to, to die. No, no, no. They're coming to live. Mm. They don't have to clean the house anymore or do the shopping. We take care of all that for them, but they're looking for enrichment. Uh, they're looking for speakers and, uh, you know, how do they spend their day? How do they spend their activities? And what, you know, what, what can they do? That's what I, that's what I do, uh, whether it's uh, fitness or, or, you know, a variety of things. So, um, you know, prior to COVID, I had come up with various activities that, you know, uh, were catching on. And then everything has stopped. <laughs> no more gathering. So I said to myself, well, what can I do? Most of the residents also, I want people to know, are low income. There, I think there's a thought out there that it's for the very wealthy. 70% are on Medi-Cal. So you, you've got, you know, residents who they don't have the computers, they don't have, you know, um, the, the means to, to, uh, to do things for themselves. They depend on the Jewish home. So when I thought of what can we do w without gathering, the basic common denominator is the phone, right? So whereas I used to get maybe 50, 60 people going to play bingo, now I came up with dial a bingo. <laughs> Yeah. So, I took, we used to have a, you know, we have one of these professional bingo machines and, you know, the whole thing and the residents would run it themselves. But with the lockdown, they couldn't do that anymore. They have to be in their room. So I went out and got one of those hand cranked bingo ball machines, you know, printed out the bingo sheets and passed them out. At first I was having people call my cell phone because that's all I had. And then you could, that's limiting, that's like what, four or five people. So then we got a uh, conference call number. Conference call number now is what I do most things on. And it's been wonderful. I might get 15, 16 people calling in. Um, they've got their sheet, I've got my sheet, and we're playing bingo. Um, bingo, I think can be pretty repetitive and not so fun, unless you make it fun. <laughs> so when I call number 13, it's, Bought Mitzvah 13. You uh, know, 21 is lucky 21 and 18 is voting age 18. Everybody vote, you know? <laughs> so nice. we have fun with that. And that was one of the first things. And then the other thing, and I'll explain why I'm wearing this um, peace symbol. Like a, is that a costume you're wearing? It is. 
It's a costume. I'm wearing a costume today. Oh, so you don't wear that to work on a normal basis? This is not my normal outfit oh. that I wore to the Jewish home. No, no. But I did start something called Nosh and Nibble, which has really taken off. Nosh and Nibble is just a weekly fun door-to-door -door activity where uh, I've come up with, I did Nosh and Nibble International. And every week I choose a different country, started with England, and I uh, have a couple of associates that would go with me. I'd get the costumes for all three of us, and we dress up in that country's theme. And we came up, so for England, we dressed up, uh, you know, in the, the British flag, and I got scones, and we went around and we played the Beatles music. We went door to door. Residents would hear the music blasting. I had a big Bluetooth speaker on, on rollers. They hear the music blasting, come door to door. They open the doors. They get their snack, they dance with us, they just enjoy the music. And then every week it's a different theme, right? So different costumes and different themes. And it did become a thing where people were really curious to see what the next theme would be. So for I have, I have um, flyers to show you. Oh, sure. So, for example, we would do Nosh and Nibble Ireland. Ireland. Okay. And we all dressed up in these pretty bold, uh, green, you know, uh, Irish things. We did uh, Spain. Okay. We dressed up as flamenco dancers. Fun. Everyone got churros, and uh, that was fun. Um, 1776, uh, Uncle, we dressed up as Uncle Sam. Sure. Um, and for the week out. of uh, Independence Day. I see That's this. right. They got the red, white, and blue bomb pops. Um, and then for this one, for the um, 1960s that I'm dressed up now, um, you know, peace out, love. Uh, so you moved from countries to decades. <laughs> yeah, we moved from countries to decades. I, I like to keep it fresh. I want to, you know, mix it up and, and not be too predictable. And I was running out of fun foods to serve for countries. So, um. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about where this comes from in you. I mean, you were marketing, you yeah. were, you know, yeah. doing executive well, work. Tell me, like, Okay, so where, where, where inside of you has this come from? And does it come from a Jewish place? Does it yeah. come from, you know? Yeah. Oh, good question. So, well, first of all, in terms of marketing, I have to say, I think that marketing and sales is a great background for anything you do in life. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, like, I like to buy from people who I trust, aren't trying to sell me something, but um, follow up with what they say they're going to do. So, you know, when a resident calls me for something, I call them back and I... I I help them. I follow through. Um, you know, when you're trustworthy and when you care about people, and that customer is always right mentality. That's, I think that's good training. So, you know, even though I didn't do activities before, I have that, that background. Okay. Um, uh, Judaically, of course, Judaism's, Judaism has always been very important uh, part of my life. I, as you, as you said, I'm a lifetime VBS member. I went to Hebrew school at VBS. I was bought misfit at VBS. I was married at VBS. Um, I sent my son to day school at, at VBS. Really, all of our all of our main life uh, events have been there. In terms of um, uh, Jewish values, when I um, was hired at the Jewish home, I discovered that part of the mission statement um, is that the Jewish home is based on Jewish values, whereas we're all of our services are open to everybody. Um, it's based on the on the tenets of right. of Jewish values. So um, I was connected to the Jewish home early in life. You know that Ellen and Jeff Brown are my cousins, right? right. right. Um, my cousin also BBS, longtime BBS members, participated uh, in the days. The same, school. the same. Yeah, all of that. Yeah, right. uh, Ro, Auntie Rose Geller. You know, right. yes. Uh, so. Um, Ellen's grandma, Grandma Bessie, would, became kind of de facto my grandma. Um, she moved to the Jewish home when I was little, and we would go visit her there. And so that was my first time uh, knowing about the Jewish home. So I was really little when I knew about the Jewish home. Um, and then when Michael was in day school, he used to love to go. We, we would go together to the um, bingo nights that the executives ran, and uh, he loved to do that. And they would... Um, have the little kids pass out all the prizes to the to the residents when they won. So it's just been something that we've always felt very connected to. Uh, and um, it's just like 
the Jewish home. Everyone knows, you know, that the Jewish home is there for, um, for seniors. Uh, we're, I think we do provide exceptional service that's not based on uh, profit. Being a nonprofit, it's really based on the needs. And that's why that continuity of care is so important for them. And, and that's why I feel so proud, you know, to represent the Jewish home. Yeah, that's amazing. So we're getting ready for the high holidays. Yeah. And as I said at the beginning, we've been focusing on this idea of chesed, this mm -hmm. idea of loving kindness. Yeah. So tell me what that word chesed means to you. Well, I would say that I'm not unique in what I'm doing. The, the hero aspect of, of chesed, of going, doing good work for people. I think that most everybody that works at a Jewish home is hired because you have that inner um, care, you know, uh, you just, there's something special about people that go to work, even in the face of what some might consider maybe a dangerous situation. I don't feel that way. I feel very safe there, but I also feel that I'm working with the best people that give them, give them themselves. And Chesed is really connecting on a level of care. Um, and whether it turns out to be heroic or not, you're just doing it because you wouldn't do anything otherwise. Wow. And so, thank you. That's really beautiful. Um, I agree. I think that you don't have to be, you don't have to be a huge mover and shaker to right. be a hero, a chesed hero, right? Yes. Um, and then, you know, as we get ready for the high holidays, I've just been trying to hold this idea of like what, what the world really needs right now. Yes. Right. Needs a little bit less judginess, right? Oh, right? We want to hold people accountable, but we yes. don't just want to like, judge them all the time. And what we need now is a lot more love for each other. Give each other a little slack, you know? And you know what? I think that relates, of course, politically, we could go on forever, but I think it relates to seniors specifically. One of my pet peeves is hearing, is hearing people describe a senior as childlike. That really bothers me because yeah. seniors are not childlike. Seniors are our elders for us to respect. They have the extra challenges of aging, right. which usually comes with hearing loss, vision loss, physical capability loss. It's very frustrating. It's very hard to be a person who's used to being um, um, productive in life, um, maybe being the, the provider, now being so dependent and having trouble with their physical capabilities. Uh -huh. So when I have, talk about tolerance, when I have residents who get easily frustrated or ask me the same thing over and over again, or who just get fed up with that phone, I just can't, I can't hear, you know? Um, I need to be extra patient and, and give them extra attention. And that's what we need now. We need kids whose parents, they can't see them in person, right? And they're talking to them on the phone. A little extra patience, a little more understanding of what they're going through. Yeah, I love that. It's so important. You know, like in the Bible, in the Torah itself, the word has one, for chesed means one thing. Yes. And then when you get to the prophets and the writings, chesed means something else entirely. So mm -hmm. like in the Torah, the word chesed means doing something for someone else because you have a relationship and you kind of have to. Not yeah. that having to is bad. You have a covenant. And yeah. when you act out of love through that covenant, that's an act of chesed. Yeah. By the time you get to the book of Ruth, the word chesed means the opposite thing. It means doing something for someone else, even though you don't have to. That's what I think of. That's right. what I think of. Yeah. And I think we need both of those, right? Mm, we need sure. to hold people accountable to the relationships that we formed with them and yeah. the agreements we've made as a country, as a world, as a community with each other. Mm -hmm. Right? I've been there for you and I need you to be there for me. And you should feel accountable to that. That's an act of chesed. Yes. But we also need those opportunities and to live through those opportunities where, you know, I don't have to help you, but I'm choosing to help you because not just because it's the right thing to do, yeah. but because it's the loving thing to yeah. do. Yes. Right? 
and we need both versions. So tell me, just as we, before we close out, what is your hope, your prayer for 5781 as we think about our lives as a covenant of chesed? Yeah. I, I'm just going to echo your words. I, I really hope for kindness. I don't know that we're going to have all the solutions, that we're going to have the correct vaccines that we need, or, you know, that life will go back to how it was. It's not going to go back exactly. We're going to have to adapt and adjust. My prayer is that people will be kinder to each other during this process, that we'll all be here to talk about the, the previous year and um, that we can um, take this time to learn more about what, what inner strength we all have mm. and what we can do for each other. Thank you. Annette, thank you for joining me today. Thank I really Rabbi Park, it's, it's been a pleasure. Um, I'm joined by Annette uh, Weinberg, who is the director of lifestyle and enrichment at the residential units of the Jewish home here in the San Fernando Valley. We want to thank you so much for being with us. Again, this is all part of us leading up to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, a year where we're really focusing on this idea of chesed, of loving kindness, things that we do for each other because we have to and things that we do for each other because we don't have to. And you can find a lot more of this information on our website, bbs.org slash high holidays, where all your questions are answered. You'll see the plan that we have for the community to celebrate this new year together. Annette, thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you. Really great to have you. Shana Tova. Shana Tova.